How's life with you? Very you well. Gosh, and my kids now are 23 and 20. I mean, you used to see me walking yeah, across the quad like holding their hands. Oh man, it's like life flies by. I it? know. Gosh, stepping back into here brings back a lot of memories. I've been in Oxford more than 30 years. World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. Because of my work on global economic governance, I'd been invited to speak at Davos a couple of years in a row. In 2008, I found myself uh, leaving Davos on a train and sitting on my train was the then Vice-Chancellor of Oxford, John Hood. The scenery was magnificent, so it lent itself to expansive creative thinking. I had identified that the one missing aspect of Oxford's portfolio was a school of government or a school of public policy. I mean, Oxford has had a magnificent presence in government, public policy and so forth in so many ways over so many years. Many colleagues in Oxford felt that we had the arsenal to do this really well. That, in a sense, told me that this was worth further exploration. The minute he said it, I thought, you know what? I want to do that. I can do that. I will do that. What Len made possible was for us to really move on this and build the school at speed. The project group did a fantastic job pulling together the idea of a government school. So in late uh, 2010, Nari wanted to have a meeting with me in Merton Street in this sort of open plan office. And I'm thinking, well, where is everybody else? Well, that was it. <laughs> there was so much to be done. A master's degree had to be put on in a year's time that had to be incredible. It had to be a showstopper. Conveniently, I had quite a good network of global leaders. So I started by asking them why they didn't turn to schools of government when either they were looking to recruit people or looking for advice. In other words, what did the demand-driven school look like as opposed to the university supply-driven model? Very early on, we realised we needed to design a completely different curriculum. Although it was daunting, everybody had that spirit of, we're here to try it out. Claire came along and she said, and this is the curriculum I'm proposing, and it was just like, perfect. And we were looking for people who came usually with a few years of experience in the world of public policy. People who were absolutely committed to wanting to make a difference in the world. People who can ask the right questions, synthesise quickly and accurately. What is it we need to do? as a government and what are our options in how we do it. The research that's done in the school is really important. The school is both a teaching and a research organisation and the way the two things come together and the way we engage with governments on both is really important. Research in the real world, in the public sphere, which is different from research in academia. You have a different audience, you have to write in a different way, you have to communicate in a different way. There are all sorts of political constraints on you in government if you're doing research in government. Some very applied kinds of research, such as that that's being done in the Government Outcomes Lab. And then there's some far more stand back scholarly research being done by others. But all of them precisely the things that are going to really help government. Oxford's beautiful buildings are part of what give people the confidence that it's permanent. Len felt passionately that Oxford, as an architectural jewel in the world, deserved a building worthy of its century and of its time, and that it had to be a building that had a real character of its own. architects came with me and gave an account of how they designed the building. The Royal Institute of British Architects described it as a cathedral of learning that they found, quite simply, 
breathtaking. Congratulations to you all at Oxford University for creating this School of Government. We're seeing a world that, that really needs better government, really aiming at a new decade of what the world needs us to do. We're 10 years old, so we're going to start seeing some really exciting things. We have former students who are beginning to make such huge differences in the world. I think everyone who works in the school feels proud. Having sat in Nairi's office with three of us and no students to a, a school now that has a global reputation. Continuous improvement is part of what we do. How can we get better the year after? How can we improve things? And, and actually, that's what we do. We really believe in our mission. That's the thing. There's no point in coming here if you don't. I think the challenges now upon us are even greater. Mountain climbers have to walk across the kind of foothills before they face the mountain. And I feel that we've come through those foothills and we've gotten fit um, and we've laid some good foundations and now we have to start climbing the mountain. All institutions grow and change and evolve through the contributions of their members. I'm in awe, just in awe, of what they've achieved.